So what I really wanted to do tonight is like, sing, because I love karaoke and I would love to... But you know what, I've got five minutes, so if you want to do karaoke, you'll have to come out with me another night. Contentment gives the freedom and courage to act generously. What gives me the courage to make that decision to give is the security and trusting God to provide and those in my life that have, that have inspired me by their own example. Some of those people will follow. My mom and dad had the contentment to come to America penniless and live frugally, living, uh, uh, raising us three boys in Peoria, Illinois, and then coming to practice in San Francisco's Chinatown and teach at UCSF. They had uh, an example to me to volunteer regularly and as uh, taking time off their busy practices to volunteer not only locally but abroad. After getting us uh, three boys through college, they made the crazy decision to go uh, to volunteer full time in China and bring medical professionals to share it in rural areas of China. Now they're retired and uh, they're taking care of their grandkids full time. My brothers have an amazing example to me. My, my brother Andy had, after serving as CTO of some successful startups, has had the contentment to have the hardest job that I know of anyone. Um, that many of you know as parents that to stay home as a stay-at-home dad and take care of his kids and go to fun things like preschool family and things. My brother Ben to create amazing opportunities for philanthropy and generosity through the proceeds of every round that Legacy Venture uh, is able to um, give because of the amazing startups that they've had the, 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 just this past weeks. You know, uh, just these these uh, crazy unicorn. Um, that you know, that have been able to go public, then are able to share uh, in that kind of generosity through his uh, firm. Jesse Mendoza is a pastor of the Gathering Church, and I met him as the founder of Jordan International Aid. It's a startup that gave me the chance, after having volunteered locally with uh, Menlo Church and my own church, to uh, help out in places like Katrina. But since they weren't going there, I, I found uh, Jesse, who uh, is also a, in the construction business but, uh, and had been renovating some of Menlo's churches. He had just gone to Haiti, and I'd been looking to go and help um, after the example in Katrina. And uh, the Menlo folks introduced me to him, and he said, you know, there's these people just dying. In our own uh, hemisphere, the poorest place is just people who desperately need help. And so I, I came back and shared with my PAMF colleagues, you know, hey, there's this incredible need. Can we get a bunch of docs together, and nurses together, and medicine together, and go and help? And so Jesse had the uh, um, courage to bring teams for 14 months after that, month after month, to uh, bring us over for a week at a time. We'd take a week off from our, from our practices and uh, go and help. And that gave me the, um, just this, the inspiration to say, man, this is an incredible amount of help that we've been able to make. And so I followed Jordan International Aid to most every uh, major natural disaster um, in this last decade. Now, it's not only the, these kind of natural disasters that I've had a chance to help with, but um, the, the heart of JA has also been in um, regular uh, missions to Kenya and to Cambodia. And the the yearly visits that we've made to poor areas there have resulted in some of the most successful campaigns in Kenya. The, um, this last year, by working with the local health department, we were able to see 4,000 patients in three days, and certainly with the help of dozens of local providers, almost hundreds of thousands of dollars of medicine that we bring over, um, and we have also the coordination with many other teams Rotary teams and other teams that um, know that we're coming with all these resources and they even direct more patients our way. So in the poorest area of Kenya, uh, the poorest uh, suburb of Nairobi, uh, in Pachaka, Kenya, we were able to have just an incredible impact inspiring people to see, hey, you've got diabetes, you've got HIV, you need to come back and get help. They wouldn't know without the kind of screening that we're able to help out there. Another physician that has been really regularly going and helping with us is Dr. Sung Chun. And he's been leading teams to Cambodia along with his wife uh, and has given the chance for hundreds of professionals over, the, over these years to be able to do the same kind of work that we've done in Kenya 
in rural areas around Siem Reap. A person that um, has given me a chance to really get to know local Palo Altans is Carol Harrington. I had a chance to care for her, and she introduced me to an organization called Palo Alto Community Fund, which there's a table here, and many of you um, uh, know of the our local endowment that's able to distribute from the millions that are in the endowment a, a regular number of hundreds of thousands of dollars of grants to nonprofits every year. They've taught me a lot about the breadth that of, gen of generosity you have to have across so many different sectors, and I've just learned so much from the um, the thoughtfulness, um, the uh, wanting to know the um, the politics and the backstory of different organizations, so you know where um, the mo the best investments can be made with these very very um, di difficult to donate dollars. One of the grantees from Palos Community Fund inspired me to actually jump in. The sister organization of Downtown Streets team is Peninsula Healthcare Connection. And six years ago, they gave me the chance to volunteer there and my first chance to volunteer with the homeless. It gave me a taste of seeing how I could care for those that I, I was caring for overseas in these disasters and in these uh, poorer areas. But I could do so right here locally. I could take a day off from my practice. I could do that on a weekly basis. Um, and they, these kind of experiences that I shared um, I want to, it brings me to those in the next generation that have inspired me. My own daughter, Natalie, has uh, found contentment in instead of doing other things that she could do after school, she comes and volunteers with me at Peninsula Healthcare Connection. <laughs> the next generation, if you give them the chance, the next generation will jump in too. She's come with me to Cambodia and she's fallen in love with the malnutrition screening program where we take uh, in children who are dying, almost 40% of um, young children in the, uh, the poor areas we're in, the rape, die of malnutrition and we radically change that by finding them, giving them protein uh, supplements and saving them literally from starving to death. And she um, comes to Cambodia and I try to get her to take breaks from our, per from our screening there and, and she goes, Dad, no, I'm saving babies. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really glad for her. <laughs> and her participation in uh, a program that a past Tall Tree Award winner, PAMF pediatrician Joe Davis, started 50 years ago called Medical Explorers. And she's had the chance to be uh, president of that organization. It, it brings doctors to give uh, a really rare view of what it's like to be a physician to high school students. There's really, there's no other program than this Boy Scouts program that gives high school students the chance to volunteer and to uh, get, get a chance to see what it's like to be a physician. I'm also inspired by my son, Aiden. He's a skater boy, and in my eyes, I've seen him become the Pied Piper of Machacas County. He is able to lead young Kenyan boys around in uh, having fun playing with them, and also in other disasters, uh, he's helped out with in Houston with his buddy that's here with him tonight and his dad. So I, I'm just, I'm, I'm showing that, that, you know, I'm glad that, um, that the next generation is, is, uh, is taking the inspiration to follow along. So after almost two decades of Palace Medical Foundation um, in the urgent care, and that in, in their generosity of the organization to give me time off to, uh, of my vacations to serve in these disasters and volunteering, um, I followed my boss over to the Santa Clara Valley Medical Center, emergency room in the Raymond Cares and Valley Homeless for Health program. Um, I never thought I'd have a chance to apply what I learned from PAMF, the highest quality provider of care, to the most vulnerable of our community. Um, those too afraid to seek care due to the cost you know, they just worry that it's going to bankrupt them to go get uh, health care. And instead, they let their illnesses get to the point that they have to turn to the emergency room in desperation. Because of your generosity of the, the businesses, you know, here, I mean, this is, this is the, the most amazing gener generator, the, the businesses here that you guys participate in here in the Chamber of Commerce. It's the tax dollars that you are able to raise that it gives a chance to um, anybody who shows up at my emergency room to get care. Um, and I just wish that we could spread the word that your generosity is able to give them that opportunity before it gets so terrible um, that they just can't um, 
they can't wait any longer. I wish they knew that there was programs that they could actually come and seek care earlier. So whether you're someone who can help fund these kind of opportunities locally or abroad, or you're someone who can afford to devote your life to serving directly, I'd ask you to let contentment guide you towards more generosity, to fill your heart with the lasting joy that giving provides. As I approach my fifth decade this Saturday, I hope you'll join me in my dreams of bringing more healing to the world and locally.